Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Yeah, really good. Thanks. I really enjoyed the movie. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you. It's always a good start. Um, I read that you were cast um, in this quite a long time before it properly kickstarted. I just wondered, did you have to kind of put it to the back of your mind to avoid sort of overthinking? So when it did begin properly, you had a sort of fresh perspective on it. Um, yeah, but that's the course of most independent films. I mean, it's not unique to have something come to you in 2003 and then you're making it in 2007. You know, like it's kind of like, oddly just the the shelf life of independent film um but yeah this one I read around 2014 2015 and we didn't end up shooting it until 2019 um but I think it was cool I like sitting with projects for a while I think so much of the film making experience is so fast-paced and you have to kind of like you know you get hired and you're flying out next week and it's all very go, 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 that it's, it's nice to kind of have a lot of time. Cause I feel like the best moments of, you know, where do our be best ideas come from? And they come from more of when we're at rest, you know, like that bathtub light bulb moment when we're not thinking about anything else, that's when the truth emerges. So I got to have several of those, you know, over the course of reading it. So I, I kind of liked it. I, I like that experience. I was, reading, I was reading to that you sort of said that this character is one of the closest to yourself that you've played. I just wonder, does that make things a little more easier or sort of more challenging? Because I'm not an actor, so I don't know. But I always imagine if I was playing like a kind of an alien or something that was such a kind of departure from myself, it becomes such a performance. It almost becomes easier, whereas things that are closer sometimes could be too close, if that makes sense. So I was wondering in this instance, did it make it almost more challenging or did it actually help your performance? Um, I mean, both are challenging. I think it anything is a challenge if they're, you know, if you, like for me, I like pushing into spaces where it's in my fear space. Like, I feel like there's growth to be had. Like it's something that terrifies me. So therefore I should do it more and try it. Um, but it can also get old. So I think that I had arrived to 2019 when we were about to start Audrey and I had just finished like Stardust and Antebellum and um, Lorelei where I was sort of playing like, you know, with with accents and, and wigs and different experience. And I was like a mermaid. Um, the Lorelei was pretty realistic. I, I, it, I just felt like I had not been given an an opportunity to do an extremely naturalistic um, performance since I was a teenager. And in a weird way, it almost kind of scared me doing so little, you know? There was a little bit of fear, like a little bit of that, like, you know, um, really simply doing so little and not hiding behind choices um, can be terrifying as an actor, but it can also be very liberating and freeing and I definitely found the freedom in it but I think I was wanting to explore that space because it felt like an underdeveloped part of my palette you know yeah I think yeah because like David Bowie said I think was it you know when you're in like a swimming pool and you're walking along the ground and it just gets so deep that you just can't stand properly where you're just kind of on tiptoes just before it gets into the deep end he said that's the best place to be creatively in terms yeah. of like, would you would you agree with that 100 i mean like that's the only place that you want you should be exploring you know um always find that edge space because that's where you're going to learn the most challenge yourself the most surprise yourself the most you know. I love that he said that. But uh, yeah, Audrey represents kind of so many of us in a way, a sort of generation of people about a sort of a true sense of sort of direction in a way, which can be a blessing, that kind of, you know, freedom of choice uh, to, to, to of where you could take your life, but also a bit of a curse as well. Do you think we're, as in people in that kind of age group, are in quite a unique situation in that regard? Um, I mean, I would hope that every age group gets to be put in a unique situation because when we get to be in conversation with something that has not had many conversations previously, we get to discover more about it. We get to become 
um, we get to learn it in a way that no one has. And so it is a unique conundrum being a byproduct of grind culture and the sort of independence or death type of mentality as we're emerging, you know, realizing that that's not the whole conversation, that there's way more conversations to be had. And that actually maybe what we really need is communitive care. You know, maybe we really like self-reliance is the wrong word, that it should have never been that. And that actually what we needed was our community and a further understanding of ourself, you know? So I think it's a really cool place that we're all in. Um, though challenging, brutal, uh, completely discombobulating, um, the entire system is sort of crumbling around us and it's very hard to be in your 20s or your 30s or your 40s, wherever you're starting your journey um, with our, you know, job force. Um, it's hard, but I think it's a blessing in disguise. You know, I think it's going to really bring out some really cool and beautiful things. And I think it already has. I'm, I'm sure every character leaves uh, some sort of mark, some sort of indelible effect on the performer that brings them to life. So what, what was Audrey's on you? Um, I think that I was maybe in a similar space of being too self-reliant in my journey, um, particularly my entry point into being a parent. So I, I felt like the conversations that Audrey was asking me to have were ones that were no longer um, philosophical and it felt like more personal, you know, that I really, I did want to have a good community around me and it was really nice to reach out for support when you needed it, regardless of how old or independent you are, you know? So definitely that, personalized that for me and obviously you're in a producing role on this project was that something you you've wanted to explore for some time and is this something you'd like to sort of explore even further maybe even looking to trying your hand at writing or, or directing one day um I mean I think what's interesting for me in my experience you know I've been doing this a long time um I don't know what actor isn't a producer in some ways I mean there's it's sort of like a dirty thing to talk about but like there is no head of the acting department. It's sort of the director sometimes and sometimes this person, but every, every actor gets a, a, a chance to develop their character, which affects the story. So the more you wanna develop, the more you wanna sort of bring in everyone else to support that. So you're collaborating with the wardrobe and the thing and in pre-production, you're asking what the location looks like and trying to sort of advocate for the character, advocate for the film. Um, so I think that it's something every actor wants to do or rather it's part of their job, but no one allows them the space to do that. So I think just having a producer um, credit sort of just opens the umbrella even further of all of your cross collaborations and input, um, which doesn't start when you're filming and it doesn't end when you wrap, you know, um, because the film takes on many different shapes and forms. So, but yeah, I, I feel like I've always been a producer. I don't know, like, that's just what we do. You, you, you make the best thing the best way. And, and that comes from starting at the beginning of the thing, starting in pre-production, you know, like, um, but yeah, I am writing. I, I have plans of directing. I've, I've done a few tiny little things and going to continue pursuing that, but I don't want to explore that until I have some more time just as a mother. Like I want to, it's, I want to, I want to wait. Because you've always moved so sort of like seamlessly between genres, but also between kind of industry, indie productions such as this one, sort of the big budget sort of blockbusters. I just wondered not how different are they in terms of being on sex. I imagine they are obviously quite different, but does your approach change at all? Is it ever altered by the, the, the size of the project that, that you're on? Or is, is the way you approach every character in every project, be it, be it a smaller indie or a huge big blockbuster, do you come at every character in the same way? No. No, I mean, it's very much, I mean, the best metaphor would be, um, you know, you're going to cut, you don't cut a vegetable same way every single time, you know, like every single time you're like a, a carrot demands this, uh, an apple demands this. I mean, every single time you should be developing a new way to approach it. 
um, even though you may have a tool belt full of your old classic standards, you know, um, I think that's maybe my favorite part of being an actor is getting to constantly redevelop my tool belt and seeing how to discover new ways to approach, you know, and re-examine old ways. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, you've been seeing some real classics across the years, which have sort of gathered some real cult-like sort of fan bases. I mean, what would you say you still get recognized for the most? Or what, what film do you have the most sort of fan interaction with, would you say? Um, I don't know. Probably Stepmom or Donnie Darko. I don't know. But there's enough of like other things where I'm like, wow, that must be on TV right now. I don't know. I feel like it's more like what's on. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think between those are the things that people know the best, or when someone's like, well, I've never seen anything. And I start there thinking that maybe, or contact, I guess. Because I was going to say, I mean, you're not just looking back. So looking forward, you've got some great projects in the pipeline. I just wanted to ask about Rebel Moon. Have you guys started on that? Are you allowed to say yet how your character fits in, or is that still all under wraps? you know exactly how much I'm allowed to say. Every journalist does. <laughs> there is a built-in sort of like, you know, nuclear secret package that every actor has to sign on to. And I love the feigned ignorance of every journalist um, or any person trying to ask questions because we know, we know it, it, it's even so deep that it's like, the everyday person knows that actors can't talk about these types of projects early on. But I love it because it builds, it builds in a fun little like, ooh, what, what are we, you know, spoilers and all of that. Um, I'm just excited to work with Zach. I love getting to work with people that I've built relationships with and we know each other well and we're supportive of each other's careers and growth points and find, you know, find inspiration in it. And, you know, that's kind of all I want to do anyway. So I just want to work with people that I have great languages with. And Zach and I have a great language, so. Yeah, because I always know that I always know you can't say a lot, but I always wonder if they like update it as like two months go by, they go, right, now you can say this or give you like a of little bit you're allowed to drop in, but maybe it's, it's not as meticulous as that. But um, I was going to about talk about talking of meticulous. I was going to say, I mean, Zach Snyder is, his films always strike me as the result of a very meticulous approach to his craft. Uh, you've obviously worked with him before. Is, is he quite like that on set? Is he someone that is very kind of, you know, on, on point the whole way through? Um, He has both. He has both capacities. I think that his meticulousness um, doesn't end in his pre- um, but rather in his filming apparatus, I think he still has a wide hand of collaboration and discovery and following what's real. Um, and then I think even more so his meticulousness is expressed in his post um, and how he finishes his films and brings them together. So I think that um, he kind of has far more range and flexibility than just that. But yes, I, you know, you work with certain people who are deeply meticulous and, you know, it's, it's a little bit harder. He's very easy to work with in the sense of collaboration and um, creatively exploring. Well, I can't wait to see it. And then we're, we're, all will be revealed, all will be revealed, I should say. But thank you so much for your time today, Jenna. Much appreciated. Yeah. Best of luck with the release of your project. All cool. right, bye. Yes, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, yeah. Is that from the Goonies? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you 